The 2024 Locked on NBA season previews continue right now. And one team does not belong in this West bottom five division. Find out who in just a moment. This is Locked on Podcast Network's 2024 NBA season preview. Your team every day. Welcome back to the 2024 Locked On NBA season previews. This episode, we are focused on the teams predicted by FanDuel to land at the bottom of the Western Conference. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm Jackson Gatlin, host of Locked On Rockets, and I'll be your host for this preview. Now, joining me are my fellow colleagues here at the bottom of the Western Conference standing support supposedly uh we've got my my good friend mike richmond host of locked on blazers jeff garcia host of locked on spurs our fearless leader david Locke, host of locked on jazz and last but certainly not least darian viziri host of locked on clippers guys this is the west bottom five and i know that a couple of us maybe more than that but at least a couple of us feel like we don't belong in this group so let's start with this right from the jump which of these five teams has the best chance to actually kind of break out of this group and make it into the West play in standings? I shouldn't even, my team shouldn't even be in, in this conversation. I mean, I'm not the highest on the Clippers this season, but with the jazz, the blazers, the Spurs, are you kidding me? Like James Harden. And I'm not the first one to sing his praises. He has never missed the playoffs. So we're talking about, Play in, sure. We 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 probably will be in the play in, but I mean, th- look, everybody knows the Kawhi injury history, and that's definitely why the Clippers are where they Darian, are. Darian, yes. Sir. yes. Did, did you see your starting lineup in the preseason? In the pre without Kawhi Leonard, I did. I mean, that's not. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Get used to that for thirty five nights of the year at minimum. Fair enough, but James Harden is a, is a great floor raiser. We all we know that even at this age, he can still win some games against bad teams like the ones on this panel. Besides <laughs> ours, like come on, Darian, I, I I love you, but the Clippers are not the answer to this question. The Rockets are, or the Spurs, but not the Clippers. <laughs> cool. what, if Kawhi Leonard plays even fifty games, those fifty games, the Clippers will be a decent team just by virtue of having him on the floor. That's a what's that's your, a pretty what's your belief? Mountain-sized if at this point. It is. Sorry. I, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. I think people still kind of sleep on what Harden can do in, in the regular season. I, I was going to ask, what's your belief in the 32 games where James Harden is the best player on the team? Like, how good can a 2024 James Harden team be? I think he can win you some games against teams that are below average. That and sounds like a can that they, sounds like a team beat, missing the play in. Yeah, can, no, no, can, no, 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 can you beat the Rockets with James Harden as your best player? That would be a tough game. That would be How a about tough the Spurs? game. Oh, absolutely. Oh, there was a lot See, of confidence. My answer, in that answer. This question, my answer to this question is Jalen Green or Victor Webanyama. I think the Houston the Rockets have a lot of good players, though. Alperin Shingoon, you know. Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks. I think they have a very solid overall team. I actually think they have a claim to not be here as well. But the Spurs, to me, I mean, I think Wembenyama is going to take a, a step up, and CP3 is going to be great for him in pick and rolls. But overall, I think the Clippers just have a better team, a team that has more focus on being decent right now, whereas the Spurs are a team built for the next couple of years. Look, I definitely want to hear. I want. I want to hear from Jeff about about this, since he's our Spurs expert. But to me, it feels like the Spurs, while they're they've made some impressive moves this offseason, brought in some vets with CP3, Harrison Barnes. It feels like the Spurs are in the same position the Rockets were one year ago, where they brought in Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. They brought in the training wheels for the young guys, guys who are going to make life easier for Victor Wembanyama. And I'm expecting the Spurs to take a jump in the standings. There's a reason that there are 12 or 13 teams out west that are all going to be really tough outs on a nightly basis. But I think a play in jump is a little unrealistic for the Spurs. What do you think, Jeff? What the Spurs did this offseason, bringing in Harrison Barnes and CP3 is what they should have done last year. Historically, they did it before. They bring in a rookie named David Robinson. They bring in Terry Cummings and, uh, you know, put them in Mo Cheeks and Ross Strickland, and look what they did. They didn't do that last year. I think we know why they were doing that for uh, just for draft positioning. Well, whatever. They brought them in, but CP3 and Harrison Barnes are exactly what the Spurs need. I think they will be in the Rockets position that they were last year, knocking on that play-in door. But we're talking about a 22-win Spurs team jumping to, at minimum, maybe a 42-45 win jump. That's a lot. That's a lot in a competitive West with Mavericks, with 
the, the Timberwolves. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, uh, you know, that's what makes me a little iffy whether or not they can make the play in. But barring that, and who knows if CP3 is even going to last the entire season, you know, he could get waived, you know, at midseason. And then there goes your point guard. So all, overall, I do not, I do think the Spurs will flirt with it. Ultimately, I don't think they'll make it in. All right, oh, here, do you me, think the, hear me out on this for a second. Wait, wait, go ahead. Hear me out on this for one second. None of a, a move Kawhi Leonard off to his own category because because his availability is such a question mark. None of us have a player on our roster that's in the top fifty in the NBA other than Lowry Markin, who's like top thirty, and then maybe Shingun's like forty. But Victor could be like a top fifteen player in the NBA this year. Like, oh, yeah. there's a chance that Victor's so mm-hmm. much better than any of our rest of our best player. That's that's the only reason I mentioned the Spurs, is that there's a real chance that Victor Webanyama is a top 15 player in the NBA this year. But I don't think Victor's enough to get him into that. It'll, it'll get him close, but he needs a co-partner. He doesn't have that right now. He's got he's got good vets around him now. He's got a little bit more structure, and, and it it feels like the Spurs are going to play what is likely going to be a winning brand of basketball this season. Now, is it enough when you look at the lay of the land in the West and how tough it is through, again, 12 or 13 different teams where every single night those are going to be teams that are competing and fighting for a playoff spot? I think we're all kind of in agreement here that the two teams that are maybe not in that bracket are sitting with us right now in the Jazz and the Blazers. And I, I want to at least make my case for why I feel like the Rockets do not belong. Well, let me rephrase. The Rockets should be in this group because they haven't proven to not be in this group. But I think of the five teams here, the Rockets actually have the best chance to make the play-in tournament. They just came off a season where they had a 19-win improvement going from 22 wins to 41 last year. And they did that despite losing Tari Eason, who's an incredibly impactful player. They lost him for 75% of the season. They lost their best player in Alperin Shingun for the final quarter of the season. It really looks like Jalen Green finally unlocked something and tapped into the best version of himself with that insane stretch that he had in in March, it feels like he's finally got something or turned the corner where now that's going to be closer to the real version of Jalen Green that we get to start this season. And then they're bringing back or adding two major additions in number three overall pick Reed Shepard, who gives them a legitimate backup guard behind Fred Van Vliet, something they didn't have last season. And then one of the most under the radar acquisitions in the entire NBA, which happened at last trade deadline, actually, is Steven Adams, who was such an integral part of the success for the Memphis Grizzlies. And he's going to be backing up Alper and Shingun, a very strong 15 to 20 minutes a night of legitimate backup five presence, something they didn't have last year because they were relying on the corpse of Jeff Green to play all of their backup five minutes behind Alper and Shingun. They were stuck playing small ball when Al P was off the court. They didn't have a backup screener. They didn't have somebody else to make life easier for their guards. They didn't have another rebounding piece because Jock Landale was injured for so much of the season trying to rehab that ankle injury. I don't see how the Rockets aren't a like materially better team this year and how they're not in at least the play-in discussion. All right, well, then let's all unify together and blast other people that aren't here. Who should be in this group? The Grizzlies. Whoa, really? Yes. I I think the Grizzlies have a really wide array of outcomes. Like, they could win 52 games, and they could win 33 games. Like, they're they're, I think they have about as wide a window as anyone in the West Mm -hmm. because – they don't have the depth that they've had, and their their young forwards that they were going to rely on to take a step forward is it, they're already both hurt, and Vince Williams and Gigi, like they're really they're top heavy in a way that they weren't when they were really good. When the Grizzlies were really good, they're really good because they had twelve NBA players, and they're not that anymore. They they don't have that. I, I wonder with the Rockets though, Jackson, do they have too many players who need to play? It kind of feels like they do. They've got they they are an incredibly deep team, but this is also going to be the year. This is the year where they figure out who is their 1A. Like do they have a 1A talent? Do they have somebody that can become a top 25, top 20, top 15 talent? Right now Shingun's the closest thing they have, but how much better can he get? Can Jalen Green become that guy? Still some major question marks there. But then outside of that, they've got a core seven, right, of young talent. This is going to be the year where they figure out, okay, who's here to stay and who is going to be used in the next big trade to maybe bring a star level talent to Houston. That's why this year is going to be so important. We still don't know whether or not the Rockets are going to reach extensions with either of Jalen Green or Alper and Shingun ahead of the season or whether they make them go into the year on, you know, kind of a prove it year. And okay, we'll re- we'll discuss the contracts with you next off season. There's a lot of questions for this Houston Rockets team, but A question that we have to get to coming up here in just a moment. Which team in this group has the brightest future? It's the 2024 Locked on NBA season preview next. 
First, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the exact same page where you actually place your bets. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just head on over to FanDuel.com and you can take a look at so many of the different wagers that they have available, different division winners, season awards, conference winners, or just the outright Super Bowl favorites. Right now, the Kansas City Chiefs Chiefs plus 500 to win it all right behind them. The 49ers at plus 700. The Ravens plus 750. Houston Texans repping H-Town right here at plus 1100 to win it all. And then right behind them, the Lions and the Bills also tied up at plus 1100. So for all those odds and so much more, head on over to FanDuel.com. Okay, guys, the Locked On NBA season previews continue right here. A reminder, you can get daily coverage of your favorite NBA team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have the lock, the NBA covered nationally with Locked On NBA, NBA Big Board, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball. All right, guys, when we look at this slate of five teams in the bottom of the West bracket, who do we think has... I guess the brightest future here, because there is a lot of young, like collectively a lot of young talent across all five of these teams. Now, I think we we kind of mentioned this briefly, uh, you know, last segment, Victor Wimmen Yama far by, by every merit is, is probably going to be the best player and maybe the best player in the NBA in just a couple seasons. So that's probably a good starting place for this group. All right, let's start it this way. If you could trade every player on your roster and all of your draft assets, for Victor Webb and Yama, would you do it? Spurs wouldn't take the p- trade. They would. De- they would decline the Blazers' trade offer for that. I think they up. might decline my trade offer too. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yep. I, I don't think they. I literally don't think they could get it done for fifteen dudes and twelve draft mm-hmm. picks. Yeah, there's no. I mean, the. I think the Rockets maybe have the most enticing yeah, offer with the, their abundance the of young talent, and I still yeah. think it's a no. Like that's how. That's the kind of talent that Victor Wembanyama is that and that's the position that the Spurs are in he is a one man army of it, it, like it's it's Wimby trumps all at this point in this group so i think the Spurs almost by default have yeah. the brightest future and it's almost like we have to just award like the second place team right you know what's crazy that's, about this conversation that's got to be the clippers yeah, we gave, we gave up all our picks to OKC in Philadelphia, so they would not accept our offer. It's all right. You didn't trade anybody who was any good in that. Oh, oh, never, never mind. You traded the <laughs> second best player in the NBA. And here's oh, the other oh, thing that sorry, I think people are sorry, forgetting sorry about, about the Spurs that makes them even a better, have a brighter future is uh, they have a war chest of draft picks. First, second round. I mean, it's just out of control. They're running the drafts moving forward. And then they have tradable players they can flip. Your Kelvin Johnson, Devin Vassell, Jer- Jeremy Sohans, if they got to throw those guys in a deal. Also, too, the financial cap space is just out of control. What is it, the second highest with the most flexible cap space in the NBA as of right now? So, yeah, it's not just Wimby. It's how well positioned they are to be major players in free agency, draft uh, night, as well as uh, trade deadline. And what's also crazy is that Scoot Henderson was like the third pick of that same draft, and you would so really pass first point guard Mike Richmond. Me or you? Who has the better future point guard, Keontae George or Scoot Henderson? Uh, oof. I I think it's Scoot. Um, Keontae George for a while last season, I was I started to be a really big believer, but I didn't think he closed the year that strong. I thought he he kind of fell off a little bit in my eyes. Um, but I, I thought the middle of the season was great when he kind of they gave him the keys. Finally, he could run it. So I'll, I'll lean Scoot. But I got to be honest, I am I'm worried about Scoot Henderson's ceiling. I don't know what it, exactly it is. I, I thought he should be a guy who's like, you know, guns for all NBA on his first contract. That, that type of player coming into the league. And I, after a season, I I do not feel that that comfortable with that prediction. I like if is he an all star level player? You know, he struggled a lot in a lot of different ways as a rookie. You know, the, if, the interesting one for Keontae is, you're right, he closed the season, though, but by that point, the Jazz were on the mission to go get their ninth pick of the draft, and so he was playing without, he was the best player on the floor. Right. You cannot have these young guys be asked to be the best player on the floor. Jack, Jackson, you saw this firsthand with Jalen Green. They asked him to be the best player on the floor for two straight years. He was so bad, they tried to trade him at the deadline this year, couldn't get any takers, and then he took off, and now we're talking about whether he's going to be a 1A star. I mean, because he suddenly started playing with Dylan Brooks, and he started playing with Fred Van Vliet, and Alfred Shingun got hurt, but that's a different issue. Um, 
Jackson just ignores that little thing in his little diatribe in the first segment today about how great the Rockets are going to be. The fact that their two stars may not be able to play together at all. He just ignored that simple fact and that whole conversation. I just throw that out there. But I do think that's the interesting thing for the Jazz and the Rock, the Jazz and the Blazers here, who would be the next people probably to have this conversation of whether or not we have futures, is whether or not we have found a piece yet to go along. We have Lowry Markinen signed for five years, but is there a second piece that we've found yet? I don't know on that and we'll find out Keontae and does Portland have a piece in Scoot Henderson yet or Shannon Sharp? I don't have Shannon enough Sharp. time on this podcast to unpack why you're wrong with that assumption, David, or that assertion that Jalen Green and Alper and Shingun cannot coexist. That is so wildly overblown. And I spent time debunking it this entire, like the last six months. So I don't have time to get to it, but you know where you can get information on that is right over at locked on rockets right down the street. But what I will say, I want to throw in maybe a wrench into this conversation because we're talking Keontae George. We're talking, Scoot Henderson, I just want to highlight here that Amin Thompson was drafted as a point guard. And even though he didn't play point guard last season, all signs are pointed to the fact, based on everything that I'm hearing from training camp, all the discussions from Ime Odoka, they are planning to put the ball in his hands quite a bit more this season. And so I'm just curious, at, from an outsider's perspective, where do you guys think Amin Thompson kind of factors into this equation? He's really good. <laughs> He's really, he is really good. <laughs> he's really good. I, 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 he's really good. He can't shoot worth a lick, but he's really good everywhere yeah. else on the floor. If you can do what he does, most players need to shoot in the league. It's just the nature of, of the modern NBA. But not every player needs to bomb away from three. And I think if he can be like a 32% three-point shooter with the slashing and the defense and as a cutter off the ball, he's a great cutter, like – um. I'm a I'm a I'm a believer, man. I'm 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 big time. I'm a big time. I'm both Thompson twins. I'm a believer. I can't wait for David to rain on the parade. Now this is this is where well, he comes I just into. I've been doing a bunch of research on this actually, and this is actually relevant for a bunch of us. Like it's relevant for C Castle and San Antonio. Also, is that Kawhi Leonard did this like 15 years ago, where you came out of college and couldn't shoot, and then you became a shooter. But I, I'm doing. I've done a lot of research. I got to do more. But I'm finding fewer and fewer players where that's the case. If you don't shoot well coming into the league, and Scoot didn't shoot great in the G League, so this is relevant to Portland too. And frankly, Keontae didn't shoot great. He's both Keontae's not under the th threshold, but there, there's a threshold number where if you're below 30th percentile in your classification and you don't shoot well, I, I can't find guys who do end up shooting well very often. And Thompson's under that. Castle's under that. It, it's... He, he's going to have to play with the ball in his hands because he has no other gravity. See, that's the funny thing is we saw last, and I'm not saying this is going to be the full-time thing for him, but we saw last season when Alper and Shingun went down, he played out of the dunker spot. He played as a screener. He played at, you know really well out of the short role. We saw him using his court vision in a variety of ways. And I don't, I don't think that's going to be his full-time gig, but it was really interesting seeing a guy who was drafted to be a point guard kind of embody like this weird, like kind of Sean Marion, like Andre Iguodala kind of, you know, connective tissue role. And after doing that, like that, that helped kind of open his eyes to what he could do elsewhere on the floor without having the ball in his hands because up to that point in his career, he'd always had the ball in his hands. Asar had always been the twin that played the more off-ball kind of wing-centric role and Amin had always been the guy with the ball in his hands. So that was kind of a new experience for him. Now he gets to roll into this season. He's not going to suddenly take all the reps away from all the other guards on the Houston Rockets but it sounds like they're going to make a, you know, a concerted effort to give him some opportunities, maybe with some five out spacing, let him get downhill, play in transition. And from all the signs are pointing to this guy is going to be a terror. It looks like he grew too. It looks like he's about six, eight or six, nine now, uh, which is even scarier to think about. I mean, we're talking about a Ben Simmons esque player, but with like the, uh, the, the basketball savant kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's a, uh, I can't think of the word for it. He's a, uh, psycho a basketball psycho he locks himself in the gym with no music for like eight hours a day like that's the kind of thing that he does like the mj kind of psycho tendencies with basketball so i, I don't know what the ceiling is for that type of player but it feels like an all nba caliber player i, I loved him at the, i love and, and darian i'd love your thoughts on this because you're such a basketball junkie i loved him when he played the five like when they played him at the five last year when shingun was out i i thought that's when he was at his best as far as Amen Thompson, though, for me, the, my peak of watching the Rockets last season was actually kind of when he was injured. So second half of the season, I didn't actually get too much to see of him. But I'm going to definitely be paying attention this season because when, when talking about futures this season, the Clippers and the Rockets are in an interesting situation where Oklahoma City Thunder can pick which of their picks they want. Unless if, I think the Rockets is top 10 protected, right, Jackson? 
Uh, it is top 10 protected, but if the Rockets somehow may, like save their own pick by being in the top 10, then something went disastrously wrong this season. So, Yeah, the Steven Adams thing I totally forgot. That's a great pickup, I think. I know we haven't seen him play basketball in a long time, but backing up Shangoon, that's really good, in my opinion. It's a very deep team. But, you know, you mentioned Kawhi Leonard, and, and you know, going back to the first segment, everyone's acting like he's not going to play any games. The guy played 68 games last year. Like, when he's on the court, and let's say he only plays 45, as I said, that's a better team than people think. And and let's not sleep on the Clippers' defensive upgrades this season. I know the Clippers don't have Paul George, but there's some players that are going to raise the floor for this team with their on-ball defense. And, and as everybody knows, you can stay in games. You have a good defensive team. As far as the future, you already know I'm not <laughs> the most pleased about the situation the Clippers are in there. Uh, definitely the worst of this group. But as far as the right now, I think the only team in this room that has two star players Jeff we kind of took the baton from you when we like anointed Wimby the best of this group but the Spurs have a bright future outside of Wimby as well and I think that's the important thing to highlight here is they've done a good job amassing some other young talent outside of just Victor Wimbanyama yeah but I still think they're still missing that uh one-two punch with Wimby your your second best player arguably is Devin Vassell he's out to start the season the guy can't stay healthy for a season that's one of his biggest to do uh, that he told me last season is to stay healthy. Well, great. You're off to the wrong foot. Uh, not a surprise that the Spurs reportedly chased Lori Markinen, Trey Young, you know, uh, a couple of other uh, stars out there because they're looking for that missing piece with Wimby. Could Devin fill that? Maybe, you know, we'll see if he could just stay healthy. He closed out uh, the last two months of last season, averaging 20 plus points or more. So that's a good sign. But again, got hurt towards the end of last season. He had surgery over the offseason again. So uh, that's questionable. So although, yes, they do have Wimby there. They do. And that's a big, big, big plus. But they don't have a second star. And that's why I think the Spurs will flirt with the play-in, but they won't ultimately get in. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, Wimby, yeah, he can do everything. But, you know, he can't do it all. And even CP3 said it at media day. He said... This team could have all the talent in the world, but, you know, we've still got some room to grow when I think he was pointing to the roster. Maybe that missing piece that that uh, the Robin to his Batman could be found in the 2025 NBA draft. Coming up, which teams here would be the best fit for Cooper Flag or another number one pick in this absolutely loaded draft? It's a 2024 Locked on NBA season preview next. First, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Look, Game Time has so many incredible features that make it an incredible experience. Their new feature, Game Time Picks, makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of different ticketing offers, but that's not the only feature that they have that makes Game Time incredible. They've got their Game Time ticket coverage, the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry, their lowest price guarantee, views from your seat so you know exactly Exactly what to expect when you get to your venue. But here's my favorite thing is they're all in pricing. When you download the game time app, you toggle on their all in pricing feature and it's fully transparent. It shows you the price from start to finish. So you're not surprised. Look, you know, my least favorite thing when I'm buying tickets to a game or a concert is you're going through the process and at the very, very end, they hit you with like the digital handling fees and the service charges and all these fees at the very end. Sometimes you wind up paying more in fees than you do for your actual tickets. It's the worst. Doesn't happen with game time. You toggle on their all in pricing feature. They show you the price up front. So take the guesswork out of buying your tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nba for 20 dollars off of your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem code locked on nba that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n nba for 20 dollars off download game time today what time is it it's game time And continuing on here, the Locked On NBA season previews. A reminder, you can get your daily coverage of your favorite NBA team by subscribing to their Locked On podcast. We also have the NBA covered nationally with Locked On NBA, NBA Big Board, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball. All right, guys, the the cr maybe the crown jewel of some of the rebuilds happening with this group, Cooper Flag, the guy that everybody has their eyes on in the 2025 NBA draft. Which team would be the best fit here for Cooper Flag? do we think? My turn. <laughs> All right, David Locke. He's he's ready to dive in. Let's go, David. What do you got I'll for take him? Cooper Flag. Perfect. We got plenty of playing time for him. Great market for him. Ready for owner. 
progressive forward thinking owner that's brought a hockey team in here changing salt lake city cooper flag we got three blocks that don't have statues on them stockton malone are on the same side we got plenty of room for future statues we're ready and by the way one other note i really think that Jalen williams is being um hurt by playing in oklahoma city he's not getting the ball enough i think he's a potential mvp and that chet holmgren and shay are denying him all of his capability and he really should come play with his brother so i think that that's my other thing there so and i have room on the other side for a statue for Jalen, and then we're set okay i'm good no and we'll take cooper flag and if we don't we'll take ace bailey that'd be good an impassioned speech from David Locke for Cooper Flag. Can anybody else match that energy for why they deserve Cooper Flag? I mean, respectfully, respectfully, <laughs> <laughs> he's he would he would he would fit anywhere. Like he would fit anywhere. Uh, the Blazers don't like they have an obvious need at the forward spot for him. He could slide right in next to Denny Avdia, and they could have. Uh, the dream you want. Uh, there is a New Balance store to sell his shoes walking distance from the practice facility. So even in Nike town where he'd have to make his new home, he'd still be still feel right at home with the newbies. Um, I, I know yeah, this like, isn't like a free agency pitch, but <laughs> what kind of a thing? I love that pitch. That's great, Mike. Yeah. I mean, the, the truth is like this sucks. The truth is that he would fit next best next to victor Wimbanyama. like can you imagine that oh, freaking front court? No, like that's please. that's what sucks so bad about thinking about this it's like when i saw the, the prep sheet for this i was like ah what a bummer um this if, if the spurs get another like two hall of famer type big man I'm, i might be out I, I like doing the podcast but i might be out I, it's i don't know if i could hang I'll definitely be open to this uh yes as i mentioned earlier the spurs are definitely well positioned to make noise in the draft uh if they want to move up they can package a multiple draft first round unprotected picks to play to teams if the Spurs don't win the draft lottery and the Cooper lottery as well. Yeah, Victor and Wimby would be a dynamic one two punch. Uh, definitely will get out of not just the rebuild, but push them into the postseason uh, faster than anybody could think and it could happen. So, yeah, Victor, Wimby, great combo there. The Spurs are looking for that partner could be in the next upcoming draft. There was an anonymous NBA executive that basically pointed out and said, I need to see if Flag is indeed a number one type offensive option who can be expected to carry a team at some point, or if he's more of a superstar role player who is better suited as your second or third best player. How do we feel about that quote? Does that, does that, is that a fair assessment for Cooper Flag? As you know, again, we, we spent a little bit of time talking about who would be the best fit for Cooper Flag. Is that a fair assessment for Cooper Flag at this point? Willing to find out in Salt Lake City. <laughs> can't judge him till i see a full game i don't go off just the highlights and i never saw his high school game so we will be tuned in at duke yeah i mean go tar heels i hope he struggles in college but um yeah i bet he'll be really good <laughs> I, bet, I, I like even if he's even if it, like I, I i guess this is like maybe a conversation larger conversation for the whole nba what do we mean when we say superstar right what do we mean when we say superstar because like james harden is not a superstar i don't think larry markin is a superstar um i don't think the rockets have one of those either blazers certainly don't um it, Vic is right, but is it is it six guys? Is it three guys? Like, what do we mean by superstar? Because if Cooper Flag is one of the top fifteen players in the NBA, you're good, baby. You're you're good. But if but if you need to be in order to be like, oh, the number one pick. If he needs to be one of his ceiling needs to be, I don't know, one of the top five players in the in the NBA for a decade. Then it's like, what are we doing? What do we like? What do we? What do we? How are we judging prospects? I think that's a that's a sort of a larger team building question and a bad answer, but it's, it's how I feel about assessing teenagers right now. Jeff, any thoughts on Cooper flag other than you want him in San Antonio? Yeah. 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 Other than that, in fact, I was just daydreaming daydream right now of um, him and silver <laughs> and black. And that's awesome. But I would be okay. If pop wants to run. So at point guard again for a month and see it crumble before my eyes to see those odds go up again. Now I'm fine with that. Pop, do your thing. He did it for Timmy. He did it for Wimby. Let's do it for flag. All right, we haven't had a ton of it. I feel like we've kind of been mostly on the same page here in this group of five. I feel like in, in the seasons past, when we've done these, you know, round tables, season preview discussions. There's been, I don't want to say animosity, but just, you know, some, you know, deferring opinions and stuff like that. I feel like we've more or less been kind of lockstep other than, you know, where Cooper flag is going to go at the end of all this uh, when it's all said and done. But let's go ahead and go through the group. And, and I want each person to take a chance to say something positive about one of the other teams in this group. Darian, I'm going to tee you up first. What do you got for us? Rockets are 
easily the only team in this group that has a case to not be in this group, like the Clippers. Uh, the Blazers, I, I think the Blazers have an incredible fan base. That's Thank all I you. got. Because Yeah, they're good people. They treat me well. I love them. I love them. Thank you, guys. Because the team, it, it's going to be the worst team in the West, in my opinion, this season. San Antonio, I mean, I'm not going to just pile on the Wemby hype train because everybody said enough about him, but I think CP3, for all his flaws, is going to be really good for Wemby and just add a little bit of seriousness to that team. And I think it's going to be hilarious. Like, I'm fully going to be tuned in. Pop and CP3. Oh, one thing for... Uh, um, that, yeah, that's about I, feel, I feel like JJ Redick all of a sudden where maybe my instructions were not clear enough where, where I'm going to have to accept some of the blame for this. Uh, but let's pass the baton to, to David Locke. David, what do you got for us? I think that Jackson, your team plays in the. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fitting that I didn't have to say anything nice about Utah. Cause that would have really been hard. Oh man. And here he comes. Here comes David oh, Locke. He's going to say statement. nice things. So I left. No, truly, I have nice things to say. The Rock, the Rockets play in the best restaurant city in America. Jeff, your Spurs play where the best road hotel is in Hotel Emma. I can't wait to go to your arena, Darian. And Mike, you've got the best TV announcer the NBA's ever seen in Kevin Calabro. Wow, I, I like it how we are just shirking the rules and we're saying one nice thing about every team. All right, up the, up the ante. Jeff, what do you got for us? Well, I'll stick to the rules. And uh, Jackson... I like that the Rockets and the Spurs still have a nice heated rivalry with the fan bases. That is just fun yeah. to watch. See the two fan bases go at each other. It's going to be spicy because I feel that maybe your team and my team will be fighting for a playing spot in the West. All right, Mike, bring us, well, not bring us home. I'll bring us home, but you, what do you got for us? I like that the Utah Jazz have really embraced having multiple courts each season. It's a really nice part of their sort of brand that they play on a bunch of different hardwoods each year. I think it's a really good thing for their fan base and their city that they always get to play on, you know, three to four different floors every year. I think that's really wonderful. All right, I'm going to wrap it up for us here and I'm going to I'm going to lob one over to the Clippers. I love the Intuit Dome. I've loved everything I've seen about it, all the videos. It looks like an incredible arena and I don't I don't know about the state of the organization for much longer moving forward. I don't know how much of a shelf life we have on the James Harden Kawhi Leonard duo and and what the future holds for the Clippers with their lack of assets, but this almost feels like a backhanded compliment at this point, but the Intuit Dome looks like a sensational arena. With that, that's going to do it for our bottom, our West bottom five locked on NBA preview. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, one more time, all of our hosts here. I'm Jackson Gatlin, host of Locked on Rockets. We have Mike Richmond, host of Locked on Blazers. Jeff Garcia, host of Locked on Spurs. Darian Desiri, host of Locked on Clippers. And our fearless leader, David Locke, host of Locked on Jazz. Thank you for listening to the 2024 Locked on NBA season preview with the West Bottom Five. If you want to hear how the rest of the NBA will play out this year, subscribe to Locked on NBA wherever you get your podcast. part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.